This conference will now be recorded. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Chamber's weekly Nacogdoches Stakeholders Conference Call. We have a nice lineup of speakers today, so thank you all for participating, and thanks to our attendees for joining us, too. Uh, this call, as you might have just heard, is being recorded and it will be posted later on the Chamber's YouTube channel along with our other past calls. We respectfully ask that you now mute your computers if you haven't already done so, your phones and other noise-making devices so that whoever is speaking can be clearly heard during our call. There will be times for Q&A and of course, please unmute yourself if you'd like to ask a question. Quick reminder that we have invited our media friends to join us today, and we welcome them. With all of that said, I'd like to turn the mic to our Nacogdoches Convention and Visitors Bureau Executive Director, Sherry Cheney Morgan, for our special guest introduction. Hi, Sherry. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, everybody. Holly Fornicke and Sierra Policritus uh, have Texas, East Texas roots that run deep. They share a collective passion for exploring and fostering community growth. Their goal is to highlight, promote, and support local businesses. They believe that by helping you make your business successful, it strengthens the entire community. Holly and Sierra's projects include ETX Life, a lifestyle blog, ETX Marketing, a marketing agency for small business owners, ETX podcast, where they share an unfiltered view of doing business in East Texas, and ETX store, an online boutique that offers small business owners an additional platform to produce online sales. And I can say that I have had the honor and privilege of working with Holly for just shy of 10 years now. Um, and Holly is in uh, tourism in our great neighboring community of, of Tyler. And I've only recently uh, begun to get to know Sierra and they both have such amazing hearts for East Texas and a deep and abiding love for everything that makes East Texas as special as we all know and have come to love. So it's my honor and my privilege to introduce my really cool friends to you, Holly. And Sierra. Uh, yes, and I have to jump in there too because yeah. I may not have known or had Holly's talents for 10 years, but she served as a wonderful chamber intern here in our office uh, while she was an SFA student. And I'm sure she has a lot of fun stories to share at parties because of that. Right, <laughs> I do. I have some good ones. <laughs> oh, um, thank you guys so much for that introduction. <laughs> well, I just want to say before we get uh, really deep into the East Texas store, we wanted to hear a little more about how all of those East Texas products, the blog, the podcast, the agency, the store, how do they work together to support our local businesses? So, hi, thank you for having us. And it's nice to see y'all. Um, East Texas Life started a couple years ago as a way to highlight all the hidden gems in East Texas. So when we were traveling around and meeting local people and visiting small businesses, we were really struck how a lot of them were underrepresented. So we wanted a way to reach a broader audience on their behalf. So I started interviewing people and blogging and the site grew in popularity and it kind of branched out from there. So we started ETX Marketing and Holly can tell you um, a little bit about what we do there. Did you want to jump in there, Holly? Yeah, yeah sure, I'll jump in. Um, with ETX Marketing, we um, focus on helping small businesses with their digital online presence. So, um, well, and I guess not not just online, but branding as well. So um, we really felt um, called to serve our community in helping our small businesses with something that, you know, if you have a restaurant, you probably know how to cook really well, but you might not necessarily know the marketing side of things. 
So we started ETX Marketing to help those businesses find a brand, find a logo, um, learn social media, get a website, and really um, get get your brand out there because you may have the best chicken fried steak that's ever been, but if nobody knows about it, you're not going to be successful. Right. And we, we kept hearing the same thing over and over, that budget and time constraints were the main reasons that small businesses weren't able to take that next step in promoting their brand or their product. So we know that there's not a one size fits all approach here in East Texas. So we really um, made a big effort to make our packages affordable and attainable for people. So then that kind of uh, snowballed into ETX store because these same small businesses were really struggling um, with the pandemic and with more sales going online anyway, pandemic or not, um, that's just the way things are moving. And sometimes things are out of reach for people like a marketing budget or advertising. So we wanted a way where we could replace the farmers markets and the festivals that people were missing out on and they could just join us online and they didn't have to travel. Um, they were reaching a much broader audience, not just in East Texas, but all over Texas. And we kind of call well, it, you know, States too. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, in the United States, too. Well, absolutely. Yes. So our target market is Texas, but anybody can order in the United States from um, ETX store. We do only take Texas based vendors, however. So we do we do kind of say, um, you know, made for Texans by Texans. That's kind of a, a tagline that we go with. And we specialize in promoting um, artisans, uh, handcrafted goods very unique items, um, and Holly will tell you some, about some of our vendors, but that's been a great response there because, again, people are limited sometimes to just their Facebook page for promoting their products. And as you know, it's kind of hard to find things on, on Facebook sometimes when you're looking for a particular item. So um, we don't charge any listing fees um, like a lot of uh, Etsy and things like that do. So we believe that you work really hard to make these products and you put a lot into them and that the majority of the profit should go back to the person that's making the product. Absolutely. Well, we didn't hear at the chamber, of course, want to see all of our small businesses do well, be successful. Um, and of course, with the shopping season upon us, people have already started their shopping. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned the vendors, some of the items there. Can you be a little more specific? I mean, what Holly knows Nacogdoches, I know Sierra does too. I mean, what businesses need to be looking at putting their products on your site? Well, let me let me give you a little screen share of our of our site. So. Um, what I like to tell people, because it's kind of hard to visualize at first, but what I like to tell people is ETX store is kind of like Etsy, um, but it's not as concentrated and it doesn't have all the fees. So we, it was really important to us when creating this that our small local businesses aren't having to pay a lot of listing fees, can list as many products as they want to, um, so that the majority of the sales are going back into their pockets because that that's the main goal right is to help out our small businesses let me show you a website or etx store so maybe you can um kelly it says i need to be made a presenter i apologize i thought we had done that <laughs> okay how about that yes that worked Can you see my screen now? Yet? No. Yes. I think so. I'll tell you what, Holly, while you're working on that, and I'm going to test uh, your presenter status myself. Uh, Sierra, would you like to entertain us with a, a story of maybe a success? Um, yes, I'd be happy to. You. Mm -hmm, I'd be happy to. So we have, um, like I said, the range in, in vendors, it's um, some very small businesses that are just starting out and then some businesses that have been established for a long time but wanted to reach a broader audience. So um, a friend of Holly's that she goes to church with, and you may have, have heard of Piney Woods Pets, 
but they were in a position to where they were starting. There we go. Good job, Holly. <laughs> they were starting uh, their business and they didn't have a big budget. And we ran a holiday promotion that if you wanted to pay a very small fee, we would go ahead and promote you across all our platforms. So they joined that and you can see 12 days of Christmas right there. They're part of our 12 days of Christmas um, vendors. So they make some really cute dog bandanas and some homemade dog treats. And they even use some of the spent grains from ETX Brewing and Tyler to make their dog treats. And so they had just been doing word of mouth and some Facebook um, sales. So we went ahead and put them on our 12 days of Christmas. We promoted them through ETX podcast and shared their products. And we have been getting sales for them almost daily, which is just such a great encouragement for them, you know, just starting out. So they're, uh, they're in Tyler. They're located in Tyler, husband and wife team. Um, like most small business owners, they have a real job and then this is kind of their side job. And so it's really inspiring to um, to see how we can and help boost their sales, bring brand awareness and give them marketing feedback along the way. One of the things they were struggling with is, well, how much do I charge for shipping? You know, how much do I charge for our products? And Holly and I are able to help guide them. And we offer that, you know, to any vendor in ETX store, if they have a question um, that, that they're just kind of unsure, you know, what do you think? Will this work? Will that work? I mean, we're, we're right there along um, to help them. Yeah, and um, this is this is their page, but let me show you a little bit um, of the ETX store. So we are doing a current um, 12 days of Christmas promotion. This year, more than ever, people are shopping online. So if you are not online, if you're not selling your products online, you need to get your stuff online. And I will say just from, I'm also a vendor. I'll, I'll say that I'm a, I'm a, I work with the store, but I'm also a vendor through Visit Tyler. I've been with Visit Tyler for seven years now. And um, we had just moved into a new location with this really cute boutique retail store right before everything got closed down. And we were, you know, talk, I was talking to Sierra about, you know, we have this great store, but we can't open it right now. And she's like, well, you know, we've got to get, get this online, get an online presence. For me, as, as a vendor, it was so overwhelming not having had sold anything online before to even think about how am I going to put this together? How am I going to get a website, um, figure out the e-commerce, figure out the shipping, figure out all of this. It was so overwhelming. And I'm a, I'm the only person who's marketing at Visit Tyler. So this was just the easiest solution. It's, you know, no risk involved. Just put your products online and, um, and it's another place that everything is marketed. So right now, because of that, well, because of, Christmas being just around the corner, we really wanted to focus on doing some holiday marketing and um, getting getting our vendors some online sales through the holidays. So there's a few different ways that we've we've done that. We are featuring a 12 days of Christmas here. But we're also we have a blog section where we tell the story of the people who are making the product because we all know that people buy things that they have a personal connection to. So this gives us a place that we can really tell the story behind the people that these products are coming from and who you're helping when you actually come to ETX store and buy products online. I'll show you some of our 12 days of Christmas vendor participants here. <laughs> And that's a good point, um, what Holly was saying there, because when you join um, ETX store, 
we take all of the knowledge that we have and the experience in marketing and we are personally invested in our vendors that participate. So whether you're a chamber um, or a city or, you know, a vendor selling jam, you know, we're going to take that um, and, and make that our personal mission to get your products out there and um, kind of talk a little bit like Holly was saying about the personal side of things and and how it affects your local community um, and how it affects people in the community. And we know that when people shop in locally and shop small, in turn, those vendors turn around and spend that money back in their community, whether it's purchasing supplies um, to make their products. So it's kind of like this big circle and uh, that's one of our, our missions. So some of those items she's showing you, you know, it's everything from a fresh flower subscription from Flower Hill Farms that's located in Laneville, Texas. Um, some of these products uh, are Austin vendors, um, Longview, like the cutting boards you see there, um, those are made by a veteran. Um, so we really, and we have a story about him um, under the blog section too. And these are a lot of these products we've talked about on ETX podcast. We just did the uh, gift guide. Yeah, the holiday gift. Um, so I would, I mean, I would say this this holiday season more than ever before, people are wanting to buy local. They're wanting to support their local small businesses and their community. And it's just our job and your job as business owners to let them know what you have. Um, Fun ideas that people are doing this year um, because people have always hosted like holiday open houses, but maybe not everybody feels comfortable doing that this year. Um, their Facebook has made it like really easy to do online live Facebook sales. And the cool thing about ETX store is if you have your products up on ETX store, you can link it to your products on Facebook as well. So if someone buys your product off of Facebook, it goes straight to your listing on ETX store. Again, you're not having to deal with um, checking out credit card fees, nothing like that. ETX store takes care of all that. It just links straight to your Facebook store. Did you want to show them the visit Tyler um, page too? Yes. You can do that. Well, and I'm going to show y'all this way because something we did at Visit Tyler, which you can also do, is we did a direct link to ETX store. So if you type in visittylerstore.com. it takes you straight to our online store. Um, so we're able to, uh, that's a, a vanity URL. That's an option that you could add on to your listing if you wanted to. Um, and we have some of our products that we have in store. We're pre-ordering a an ornament that we do every year. Our, our, so this ornament we do every year, a souvenir ornament, super popular. We have never, marketed it online. This is the first year that we've been able to market it online because of ETX store. And then these are some of the other options that we have in our gift shop um, that we can send people online to buy as well. And um, this one is made in Longview. Longview? Um, right? I think she's in Lufkin. In Lufkin. Yeah. Lufkin. Yeah, that's another what so what Holly is saying is that's an individual vendor um, Wiggly signs and she decided that um, she was fine with giving a percentage uh, back to visit Tyler because again, she's a small business owner. And so she created this sign especially for Tyler. And so for every sale um, visit Tyler gets a portion of that. So that's really neat. And um, Nacogdoches did the same thing. So you can also check that out and see their products as well. And it's really neat. We could take your logo and make branded merchandise. Um, we have a graphic designer that can do specialized, um, you know, logo design if you need help with anything like that. 
yeah, visit Tyler with, I mean, visit NAC is up there. Well, ladies, this, I see the NAC logo there. Thank you for showing us that. And I hope to yeah. see more Nacogdoches businesses featured on your site. It sounds like an easy way that whether they already have a web presence or not, it's additional exposure for their businesses and the good things that we offer here in Nacogdoches. Absolutely. So, I, uh, I want to thank you again for joining us. Does any of our attendees, any attendees have questions for Sierra or Holly? Y'all are so easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did a great job of uh, showing us what you've been doing in addition to all the other things that you do. And I love the message behind it, which is support our neighbors, do business with you know our local folks because they're the ones that are reinvesting in our community. And that's very important. And I think we see that throughout East Texas. We always want to work with our neighbors. So thank you guys again. We thank you for you. having us. Would you mind um, in the chat box, give your contact information in case anyone would like to use that? Definitely. I'll do that, Sierra. Thank you, Holly. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to toss it back to Sherry. Uh, it seems appropriate that following that presentation, she could give us her report for uh, our tourism here in Nacogdoches. Can you hear me? This is Joanna. Oh, hey, Joanna. Joanna Temple hey. with the CDB. Yeah, Sherry got called out, you know, mom duty. So she asked me to um, kind of give you guys some ideas of what we're doing over here. Might be repetitive since uh, I'm usually half listening. So bear with me. <laughs> um, anyway, um, just some of the things that we've got planned for this Christmas. Uh, Sierra, of course, is involved uh, with this. We are promoting our nine weeks of nine flags. Uh, we decided to take this opportunity and look at fourth quarter as a uh, period of shopping events, uh, partnering with our downtown uh, Main Street and all of the uh, retail stores here, and also trying to reimagine and redefine what nine flags means. Uh, since there really hasn't been a nine flags festival uh, for some time. So it gives us an opportunity to take our history and make it hip story that I know Sherry has talked about um, in many of her presentations. And so what we've done is we've invited uh, local businesses and organizations to come into our space and uh, take these flags and put their spin on them. So uh, we've got a couple of them that are up now. They are uh, a work in progress, but some <laughs> of the creative uh, uh, mojo, I guess, that's going into the interpretation part of it, as you can imagine, 2020 uh, is just over the top. So <laughs> in addition to Ashley providing the history of what these trees were uh, initially, we're going to have our participants provide us with uh, a little story of what it is we're looking at. Um, so definitely would love for you guys to come down. We've asked that they all be up by Thanksgiving. We hope to have some uh, obviously done by this weekend and maybe over the weekend as we celebrate our downtown uh, Merry Christmas market. We will have vendors in our location as well. Um, and this is just the CDB's way of uh, getting in the Christmas spirit and grabbing some of our creative resources here in town uh, and letting them go to town. Um, I can't wait for y'all to see some of them. Uh, are they going to be a little wacky? Probably, but yay for us. Uh, <laughs> secondly, uh, for any of you guys that did make it out to our first uh, Knack at Night movie uh, in conjunction with the library, we have been able to secure several more sponsors and we are kicking off our knack at night christmas movie series the saturday after thanksgiving we're uh, going to be showing one movie for four weeks starting november 28th and then the first three weekends in november we invite you all to join us um, we are going to start the december 5th one 
uh, at eight, and that's just to support the um, parade that will be happening at the high school this year. Of course, Sherry is also uh, very much involved um, with that. And so we wanted to be sure that everyone is able to enjoy that opportunity. Uh, we're maybe going to have some live music out there as well. We do have some outdoor seating uh, as well as the traditional uh, vehicle seating. So we encourage you to go and check us out on either our website or uh, Eventbrite. We've also listed those on our Facebook and social media pages. Uh, Ashley is creating some giveaways for us for any of the movies. So you can pick and choose. We have a food truck out there. Some of our sponsors will be out there. We're gonna have a photo op. The uh, Civil Air Patrol sells hot chocolate and popcorn. I mean, it is truly a fun event if you haven't been out there yet. So please join us. It is a fundraiser for us as well. It's $20 per vehicle. Uh, if it's a couple, it's $10 a head. For four, uh, that's $5. We really feel like it's a great value. So please join us over the Christmas. We have a huge sponsor sign that's hanging off of our uh, building right now, uh, showcasing everyone that's playing with us. So we want to continually thank everyone that's uh, helping us with that um, that endeavor. So, uh, and then finally, if any of you guys were able to join us this last weekend, we were able to coordinate with SFA and their jazz ensembles on the brick streets behind our building. We're calling it the Back Porch Concert Series. This is something too we're looking at to maybe continue uh, being outdoors. Um, really is much safer while we're working our way through the pandemic. Uh, we got some chalk out there and created some seeding pods. Of course, I don't know if everyone saw the chalk, but uh, we, had, we had people all over the place. Um, SFA put on a wonderful performance. We had food trucks um, and we had Naka Valley. They ended up selling out. Of course, I was encouraging bottle sales, so everyone was feeling, feeling pretty good. Um, but it was a perfect night for an outdoor concert. So with our community being music friendly, it gives us an opportunity to see what we might be able to do moving forward, utilizing that space back there uh, and doing it in a safe manner. So uh, look forward to creating some more fun things like that. Sherry did have the opportunity to meet with our city manager yesterday. He's a big event person wants to see more things happening downtown and we hope that we're able to uh, coordinate some cool efforts in that. So that's it from the CVB. Thank you, Joanna. You're it's welcome. good to hear those kind of reports. That's nice. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure if our president of Stephen F. Austin State University has joined us, but I don't want to overlook Dr. Scott Gordon. If he has a report, he can jump on. So we will move on down. I believe our city manager might be with us though. If uh, Mario is here, can unmute and give a report. We'd love to hear from you. Hey, good morning, Kelly. I hope uh, Wayne's doing better. Uh, look forward to seeing him again. Uh, my short, my report, short and sweet. We've got a city council meeting tonight um, that uh, um, one of the last few we have to the remainder of the of the calendar year. One of the big things that we'll be bringing tonight will be our discussion with our legislative consultant on the legislative agenda for the upcoming legislative session. So um, we'll be presenting that information to council tonight and getting their feedback to make sure we are on, on in, in keeping with what they would like to see uh, the city of Nacogdoches pursue. Um, Otherwise, been a been a good week, and I uh, believe Amy's on the call too. We've we've had a, a little bit of a, a spike in numbers on COVID, but I think she can kind of relate more to uh, kind of give a little bit more explanation on that, and and just some messaging options that we're going to be doing here in the next uh, few days leading up to Thanksgiving. Otherwise, all's good, and appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Amy. If you're ready to give that information. Hi. Hey. How are y'all doing? We're doing Thank you for having me on. Um, yeah, so um 
you, those of you who have been on the call for many, many weeks, you've heard me say this before, but I'm going to reiterate it because um, we did see what some would call a spike over the weekend. However, um, I just want to take a little bit of time today to share with you kind of the full picture of COVID numbers in the community. Um, so the way that it works is we get our data from DSHS, and that has been our charge from the very beginning. Um, those of you who have followed along since March, you know that we've changed the format and kind of the way that we send out the numbers, but we always use our official numbers. And those official numbers come from people who live in the city limits and in, within the county. They're all lumped in together. And so those are folks that have a verified address in this community. Um, this is independent of SFA students. It could be SFA students if they're permanent address address is included here, but those numbers kind of function. It's not really apples to apples when you compare um, SFA's numbers to our numbers. Um, but to share with you kind of what happened, we did see a slight uptick in what we call our positivity rate. And so that's the percentage of tests that were positive cases, um, but not an uptick that we would qualify as a um, a spike in numbers. Um, our hospital numbers look really good and um, our ICU numbers look good as well. And those are the really, really important measures to look at. Um, the, we had some cases over the weekend. And so you saw um, on November 13th, there were five cases followed by on the uh, zero cases. And then you saw 26 cases posted yesterday. Um, we posted two today. And so um, it's important to keep in mind that that um, 26 cases could be potentially from Halloween, but it also could be because we had a 150% increase in the testing numbers. And so we average about 125 tests today. Um, that day when we saw um, that what what you'd see as the spike, the 26 cases, we had 305 tests that were that were taken that day. And so while we did see an increase in positivity rates, it's not anything, um, you, you're hearing the headlines on the news and um, our friends in El Paso and places like that that we keep in our thoughts and prayers, but um, we don't believe that that is the case here and we don't believe that there is a, a big uptick in numbers. Um, we wanna encourage the public to continue. Um, we know that Thanksgiving is coming up and people are inclined to to want to do social things and gather in groups. And it's really, really important for us to remember to continue social distancing, keeping those gatherings to a minimum and wearing masks, hand sanitizing. Um, still, it remains the largest way to prevent this virus is to wash your hands. And so um, that's something we've heard from the very beginning. But I think as we enter this holiday season, it's important to remember that. And also, I want to um, compliment SFA students. They are um, doing a great job of, of keeping their masks on and keeping numbers low at the campus as well. I haven't seen the numbers today, but um, I know that that is a challenge when you look at um, students that like to gather and we all like to gather, but um, it's super important that we continue on the right track. Um, we also posted today our 7, 14, and 21 day moving averages. And so um, we continue to post those every Tuesday so that we don't just give us, give the public a one day snapshot because of the things like the increase in testing numbers would increase your, posit your positive cases. And so um, we wanna continue to encourage people to look at those moving averages that we post every week so that they can get a full picture of what's taking place and not just looking at daily case counts. Um, and with that, I think I'm good, Kelly. I appreciate the time to kind of explain all of that today. We've gotten some questions, and so I kind of wanted to flesh that out this morning. We appreciate that, Amy. Thank you very much. Uh, it's my pleasure now to introduce our representative for Governor Greg Abbott's office, Ms. Betty Russo. Good morning, Betty. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, several announcements today. Uh, Governor Abbott announced that the Texas Department of State Health Services is allocating an initial shipment of the Eli Lilly and Company antibody therapy to be distributed as early as next week to acute care hospitals across every geographic region in the state. Uh, they are at no cost through the U.S. Department of Health and Human, Re and Human Services. Uh, the next one. Governor Abbott thanked the IKEA U.S. Community Foundation for gifting the state of Texas $4,900,125. The, 
The funds are equivalent to the amount of money the state paid in unemployment insurance to IKEA retail workers in Texas who were previously furloughed, furloughed due to COVID-19. And then Governor Abbott issued a statement congratulating Representative Dade Phelan on securing the necessary votes to become the next Speaker of the Texas House. And keep in mind that he still has to be elected by the House when the session starts. So it's not quite a done deal, but he did garner the votes necessary ahead of time. Um, let's see, there is a webinar coming up Thursday, November 19th from one o'clock to 2 p.m. It's optimizing PPP loan forgiveness with opening remarks from the governor. Uh, the, webinar, the webinar will provide Texas small business owners with an update on Paycheck Protection Program loan forgiveness. Uh, there have been many changes made to the loan terms and the calculation of the value of forgiveness. This webinar will provide information on how to estimate the value of the potential forgiveness of your loan. And there will be a live Q and A session uh, at the end. And if you're interested in this, let me know, and I can put a link in the chat. And that's it for me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Betty. If, go ahead and put that link in the chat. Uh, I think I might have seen something, and we'll send an email out on that okay. too, on membership because okay. I know a lot of folks are interested in that subject. Now, from House District 11. We have our state representative, Travis Clardy, joining us. Hi, Travis. Happy Tuesday. Good morning, Kelly, and happy Tuesday to everybody else. Uh, I want to thank everybody for the presentation today. It's been very good. Uh, Amy, uh, great job covering what's going on with the, the virus. I think we do have a, a, a bit of a, a bump. Our numbers are trending up. That's true around the state and around the country. But uh, to your point, the, the big numbers we look at, I check on a daily basis, is the hospitalizations and the uh, ICU availability. And uh, we're in good shape there uh, relative to the rest of the state. Uh, but again, that's all do those things. Wash hands, uh, uh, keep some distance, wear your mask, uh, just use your common sense and we'll pull through this thing. Through the holidays, uh, I will tell you personally, we're taking extra precautions not to attend a lot of events. So. Uh, I hope Nancy Wyndham may be on here talking a little bit. I'll be participating in the, the Texas Forest Country Partnership uh, later on, uh, I guess, uh, tomorrow, as a matter of fact, uh, doing that virtually as well. So uh, our caucus is supposed to meet in Austin uh, Wednesday, Thursday. I'll be attending that virtually as well. Cancel certain events. Just try to take care with the, uh, those of us that have a, a young ones or, in my instance, a 91-year-old mother living with us, take a little bit extra care. So we uh, uh, slow the spread and uh, with the good news that a vaccine is on its way. So uh, I think hope is in sight as we approach the end of the year. We can soon look backwards on to 2020. Let's get to 2021. So big news for 2021. Uh, Betty, thank you for your uh, presentation from the governor's office. We start the uh, legislative session uh, in two months. That's hard to believe. Uh, January 12th is our first day. And we will be uh, having our a new Speaker of the House, Dave Phelan. Uh, we have a lot in common. He's just down the road from us in uh, Beaumont, Texas. Uh, he's the father of uh, four sons. The difference is my, my baby's just turned 29 this week, whereas I think his youngest is five. So a little bit uh, uh, more uh, uh, difficult job that he has right now. But Dave's a very accomplished member. Uh, he'll do a, a fine job. We have not done it officially. That can't happen until opening day of the session. But uh, he has broad support, both Republicans and Democrats. And uh, I think he's going to do a very, very good job as our new speaker. And uh, again, because he's from East Texas, down in Beaumont, I think he's going to be very helpful for us here in Nacogdoches, uh, picking some issues dealing with water, with flood control, et cetera. So um, looking forward to the session. It's going to be different because of the, the COVID uh, situation. We're going to be having all sorts of security measures. I'm hoping we will be able to open the Capitol up to everyone. But right now, I'll tell you, the plan is to have it uh, somewhat restricted. It's not going to be absolutely shut off. But our hope is before the end of the session, that we can open the, the capital doors back up, uh, it'll allow people back on the grounds and, and get back to life as normal. So but I'll keep you posted as we get closer to that day. Um, I would ask anybody here has any questions. Obviously, let me know on the, on the call here today or you can email or, or uh, text or whatever. You can get hold of me or talk to Jerry Jones, my district director. But if there's ideas or thoughts or concerns you have about 
what's going on now or need information or if there's legislation that we need to consider uh, please let me know i will be in the next two months going through cherokee nacogdoches and russ counties and talking to my uh, mayors talking to the county judges talking to our our institutions, SFA, Hawaii State Hospital, and others, uh, just to make sure there's not something we need to attend to in the next session. So if you have any ideas or thoughts in that regard, again, please let me know, and uh, we'll look forward to going back to work. And I guess I should thank everybody on here. Well, I should thank those of you that voted for me, which I hope is everybody. Um, but uh, thank you for the recent election and for your support and thoughts and prayers. And again, it's a, it's a privilege and honor to be your representative. Uh, going back to my fifth term, and, and uh, Judy and I are looking forward to, to uh, getting back and doing the people's work. So thank you again, Kelly. Appreciate you letting me on the call. Well, thank you very much. We're happy to have you. And I'm glad you mentioned Nancy Windham, the president of Texas Forest Country Partnership. She's not able to join us today because she is getting ready for a major event. It's their annual economic development summit tomorrow. They are conducting that online, and she asked that I share the link for registration. You can still register for that event. I know you said you were going to be a participant there, Travis. Uh, along with your housemates, I have a list, Trent Ashby, Ernest Bales, and Chris Patty, and James White. So uh, that looks like a good lineup, and y'all are going to take questions from the audience, so that should get interesting. Yeah, and I'm hoping Senator Nichols will join us as well, but I'm not sure about that, but he was I think initially slated for it. So, you know, that's a lot of guys wanting to talk for an hour. So we'll have something to say. <laughs> All right. So I just posted the link if you'd like to register for that event. Thank you again, Travis. All right. Moving on to our uh, social services update. I see Gary Lee Ashcraft with the Nacogdoches Area United Way on the call. Hi, Gary. You're muted, Gary. Oh, turning your mute on or off. Uh, it looks like I've been uh, put away by the Secret Service, this camera. I don't know how to get that thing off dark, but it's kind of a exciting report. Uh, campaign is actually looking good. Uh, we're uh, probably, we have made the 200,000 mark. We've, we've never no, we set a 300,000 goal just because uh, we, we decided we'd go for it. I feel confident that if we get over $250,000, it's not all about the money. It's about the participation by those who um, care about those who need us most. So uh, the companies are coming through best they can, the banks, the hospitals, individuals, and we're doing the best we can in here with what we've got. So uh, uh, thank you all for donating if you hadn't. Please donate. It's uh, more important now than it ever has been uh, in our, uh, in my time of 13 years with the United Way. Uh, this, this money that you're donating is going to go to help agencies next year to execute their programs. And tell, I tell you, this year we had to uh, raise a little bit more early on in this lovely pandemic and uh, kind of sustain some agencies that were very concerned uh, about uh, just making it. Everybody was uh, really scrambling right at first, but I think everybody settled down and we were living with this uh, COVID thing. Um, speaking of that, we have a full bore, socially distanced, properly done turkey trot coming up Thursday morning. Uh, we need volunteers. So if you uh, are inclined to volunteer with us or your company wants to send out a team, we're going to start. You need to show up about 7, 730 at Pecan Park. It is a 5K, uh, and uh, the race uh, for kids will start at 8. Uh, we have about a, up to 100 kids that are going to run. That's really fun to see. Uh, if you come out and volunteer, see all these little kids scrambling every which way, and they get medals and, th and things uh, when they finish up. And then people like me who are world-class athletes, I hope to get to run this year. Uh, my wife just sent me a text. I did say Thanksgiving morning for the turkey trot, I do believe. Uh, <clears throat> that's when you, you can burn off some calories that way, so you can go eat some more of that lovely turkey. But uh, And dressing, that's my favorite part. But anyway, um, we'll run that 5K and wrap up probably about 10 o'clock or something like that, if not earlier, and you all can go on back to your families, uh, socially distanced, not too many of you, all the things that we've got to do, and of course, wear your mask. 
um, the parade. Uh, I think, thank you uh, uh, for talking about the parade um, uh, and we're so indebted to the uh, CVB and Sherry and her, her team uh, uh, to helping us with the parade. It's gonna be a reverse parade, which took me a while to get but the, the floats, uh, the people that do floats, uh, they're uh, excited and uh, we will have our parade uh, at the uh, Nacogdoches High School campus. And uh, more details about that. If you want a parade uh, application to sign up to walk or to uh, put your float in there, uh, you can pick it up at the CVB. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, Mike Bay, especially, bless your heart. He's the guy that's got to handle all that stuff. Uh, I wish I could be Mike. Um, so that's going to happen on December the 5th and it'll start about six o'clock, six 30, somewhere in there and, uh, be watching for more information about it in all of our relevant, uh, social media, uh, our special newspaper TV, Donna's on the line, all that kind of thing. Uh, so there's Turkey Trot parade and campaign. I will say if, if you have a, employees, a team, uh, agencies, or people that need masks, uh, get, get in touch with Keith Kiplinger, uh, the chief uh, fire chief, and he has got masks, both the um, uh, K-9 or whatever it is, that's a dog. Anyway, the K-1 and uh, uh, the surgical mask, and uh, we've got a bunch of them here, so contact me, I'm in and out of here, and uh, we can get masks to you. So uh, uh, what what Keith and his team are trying to do is uh, get as many masks out to folks as possible. Those things do work. Um, uh, wear them and uh, socially distance. Wash your hands like uh, Representative uh, Cardi said. Okay, I've talked too much. That was great. I enjoyed it. Uh, goodbye, you all. If anyone has any questions of me, try to find me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well done. Uh and uh, I also see Les Linefarger with Nacogdoches ISD. Les, before you start, I have to say thank you again to you and Aaron with the ISD and of course, Dr. Judy Abbott at SFA for showing our leadership Nacogdoches group a lot of good things last Thursday. So thank you folks for that. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we sure enjoyed it. Um, just a couple of brief things. Um, our students and staff will be on Thanksgiving break next week. And I know our teachers, students, and, and parents too are ready for some time off. And we will, we will be out of class for the entire week of Thanksgiving, returning back to school on Monday, November 30th. There is no football game this week. Hallsville, the opponent on the schedule, had to forfeit because of a COVID-19 case and that uh, that forfeit will improve Nacogdoches High School's overall record to four and three this season and three and two in District 9-5A and that's on the heels of last week's win over Jacksonville at Dragon Stadium. So the varsity will not play this week. Their next game will not be until Friday, November 27th, the day after Thanksgiving, when they play host to Texas High, the team that's leading the district right now. That game's kickoff has been moved to 5 p.m. that day since we're going to be on Thanksgiving break. But uh, just once more to, to let everyone know, there will be no varsity football game this week because of Hallsville had to forfeit. Kelly, that's all I've got. Uh, I'll be happy to take any questions. Any questions for Les or any of the previous presenters? And if I missed one of our partners, please jump in. I, I'd hate it if I looked over someone or didn't give them a chance to give their report. Well, early in the call, I did post the link to the Chamber's online calendar with Chamber events highlighted. When you follow that link, you will see that through a variety of activities, the Chamber is working with our local businesses and celebrating with our members. A number of live stream ribbon cuttings have been added to line up and please take note that the chamber will hold its eggs and issues breakfast meeting at 7.30 a.m. on Thursday, December 10th. Our chairman, Ted Smith and president, Wayne Mitchell, 
will present Regroup and Reconnect, giving a chamber outlook for 2021. You may attend the meeting in person with a prior registration, or you may attend via GoToMeeting. And then also on December 10th, we're very excited to announce that Next Space will host an Alive After Five. So we can advance in our reconnecting. And that event will start at 5.30. That's also on our calendar. So please use these resources available on the Chamber website, the calendar, the business directory, and other pages that offer you information that can make your business even more successful. I'd like to mention that our Chamber President, Wayne Mitchell and Bonnie, appreciate all your prayers and encouragement. I know we all hope to see him soon, but understand he needs to follow his doctor's orders after a successful surgery. We are going to give our conference call a break next week for the Thanksgiving holidays. So no conference call on November 24th. The chamber office will be closed on Thursday and Friday in observance of the holiday. And our board of directors and staff wish all a safe and happy Thanksgiving. And most importantly, shop local this holiday season. <laughs> this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.